Key Stage 3, Level 4, work based on the National Curriculum Level Descriptors. Level 4, Data Handling or Handling Data. So, Frequency Table and Diagram for Grouped Data. So this is what we mean by a frequency table. We do a tally of the information, then we add up the actual numbers and write them in here, and they're called the frequency. So here's some results for um, an exam, some scores. Somebody got 34%, so that's in that group there. Somebody got 43%, so that's in that group there. Somebody got 56 Somebody got 24, somebody got 66, somebody got 47, somebody got 37, and so on. So let's suppose this was finished and it looks something like this. Because I haven't written down all the numbers, so we'll just make something up here like that. This will do. So let's suppose that that's the result. So the tally there is 3, so the frequency is 3, that's 5, 8... That's 5, 10, 11, that's 6, that's 2. So that's called our frequency table, doing a, tab a tally and then the frequency. That can then be put on a diagram, which is usually a bar chart, like this. So we've got 0 to 20, so let's go along here, 20, 40, 60, 80, hundred and up here we'll go two four six eight ten and then we make our bars go to the right height so this goes up to three obviously using a ruler next bar goes up to eight up to eleven And what have we got now? Six and then two. Six and then two. So that's our frequency table and our diagram for the grouped data. To find the mean, mode and median and range. So the mean is add up the list of numbers. So I'll put add them up. So we do that, that's 9, 12, 13, 14, 24, 32, 40, 50. And then divide by how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And that calculates the mean. The mean is add them up and divide by how many? Now let's move on to the mode. Find the mode of this list of numbers. Now the mode is the most common or most popular. The one you can see most of. Now you don't have to put them in order to find the mode. But it's possibly a good idea. So I've done that. So let's have a look at it. So the first list of numbers, put in order, you can see that there are more 4s than anything else. So the mode is 4. The mode is the most popular or the most frequent. If you look at this list of numbers, once they've been put in order, there are actually 3 4s and there's 3 8s. So it's possible to have more than one mode. Or, when you put them in order, you can find nothing is the most popular. So you can put there's no mode. So the mode is an interesting one. The mode is the most popular, and you can have more than one mode. Or, in fact, in certain circumstances, no mode whatsoever. Then we've got the median. Now, the median is where you have to put the numbers in order.
So you want the median of a list of numbers, you must put them in order. So I have put these numbers in order. So there's the list of numbers and I have put them in order. So the median is the middle value, the ones in the middle. So if you have a look at these, you'll find what's in the middle. So the 4 is in the middle. Just double check it. 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers there. 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers there. Now if you look at this group of numbers, when you put them in order, you actually find 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's nothing in the middle. So then you have to go in between these two numbers and make the median 4.5. Smack dab between the 4 and the 5. Or in this case, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is between the same number. So between 4 and 4 is 4. So the median is put the numbers in order, and you must put them in order, and then find what's in the middle. Lastly, in this group of words we're meant to know and understand is the word range. Now, there's certainly no need to put them in order at all, because you just find the largest number and subtract the smallest number, and that gives you the range. So in this case, that's the largest number, that's the smallest number. Quite often, in these questions, it's definitely possible to do that in your head. But I would highly recommend you always show your working out of how you worked out the range. The range is the largest value, take away the smallest value. We need to understand the term listing possible outcomes. Listing possible outcomes. For example, if you throw a coin in the air, it can either land heads or it can land tails. That is what is meant by listing the outcomes. Let's list the outcomes when you throw two coins in the air. So they could land down both heads, or the first coin could fall a tail and the second coin a head, or the first coin could land a head and the second land a tail, or they could both land as heads. This is called listing the possible outcomes.